Hi, everyone. Uh, today, I'm just going to give you an overview of the digitization program at the Linnaean Society to date. Um, if some of you are still in the digitization stage, you may uh, see a collection that's similar um, to one of yours, and feel free to ask me about it in more detail later. Before acquiring our own scanner in 2011, and before I started at the Linnaean Society, um, our specimen collections, which include fish, shells, and insects, and our herbaria, which includes the Smith Herbarium and the Linnaean Herbarium, were digitized at the Natural History Museum. Also, our Linnaean correspondence was outsourced to a commercial company. In 2011, with a generous grant from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, we were able to purchase our own dedicated Atis Book Drive Pro scanner in order to digitize the Linnaean Annotated Library and our collections and notebooks of Alfred Russell Wallace. This scanner was de designed for um, book scanning as the cradle design um, minimizes damage and stress on book spines, and the image capture is performed by two digital SLR cameras. Um, a new version of this scanner has just been released, and it has improved lighting and a cradle that um, can move to flexible angles now, although I have a feeling we won't be purchasing that anytime soon. Um, although the AT scanner was designed for books, uh, we have found it quite versatile and have used it in all of our digitization projects since. Um, it's great for single sheets such as this. This is um, from the Linnaean Manuscripts Collection, um, and it's from Linnaeus' portfolio. We're not quite sure of the provenance on this one yet. Um, it's great for folded correspondence and manuscripts. This one is an example of a letter from the Smith correspondence. Um, I must admit, this image is a bit of a cheat as it's actually two images, but if you are presenting your images in a PDF viewer or something like Turning Pages software, um, the scanner makes excellent images with the dual camera system. And also, by capturing two images, you minimize gutter distortion and um, curvature that you would get if you took a picture of one, Im one image of two sheets lying flat. Uh, also, if you build the right mounts for it, even if you're on an angle, um, you can get some pretty decent 3D images. These are three images of Linnaeus's um, commonplace book from the manuscripts collection. I've also made use of light boxes. Here we have um, a specimen from the Smith correspondence, and it was deemed too fragile to remove from the original packet. So I used the light box um, to at least show people what was actually in the packet. And also, we get quite a bit of interest on um, watermarks on the historical papers. And using a light box can definitely highlight uh, the watermarks. Um, our online collections are hosted by the University of London Computer Center. And also, any images from projects funded by the Mellon Foundation, which has been most of them, uh, can be found on the JSTOR website. We have been fortunate to work with a very excellent team from ULCC that have made it relatively simple for us to manage our online collections. We're, we provide them with the images and metadata, and they take care of the rest, including um, digital archiving and preservation. We do have administrative access to make changes and corrections to the online collections once they're up online. Uh, for the metadata, it's quite varied. It depends on the scope of the project. For some projects, such as the Smith correspondence and the Linnaean manuscripts, we have been very fortunate to have a dedicated cataloger or archivist who can generate masses of rich metadata for us. For other collections, such as the Linnaean, Linnaean annotated library and the Wallace notebooks, we only had the means to provide very basic metadata. But as my colleague Elaine will uh, point out later, we hope to enrich this metadata uh, for these collections in the near future. OK. Now, I'm just going to go through briefly the collections we have done since acquiring the ATI scanner in 2011. Um, 
The first collection we did, as I mentioned earlier, was the Linnaean Annotated Library. This is 197 volumes and over 60,000 images generated. <clears throat> the Annotated Library is from um, Carl Linnaeus' personal library, and it's a collection of books that Linnaeus not only published, but he later interleaved and corrected and annotated and sometimes very copiously. The scanner originally purchased for this project, uh, well, we chose this scanner because this project was primarily bound volumes. And however, though, even with this scanner's design, um, some of the books, the interleaving and annotations were written before the books were actually bound. And some of the bindings were far too tight, so we are lucky enough here to have a full-time paper conservator, and we also hired um, a bookbinder. And we identified some of the books that we couldn't actually image all the annotations, and together they disbound the books for me. I digitized them, and then subsequently they were rebound. Uh, the next collection, we have a nice little collection of Alfred Russell Wallace's notebooks. There's 10 notebooks, and it generated over 2,000 images. And uh, four of these uh, journals are Wallace's records of his travels around the Malay archipelago. These notebooks were quite easy to do because although they were bound, they had rather flexible spines. Uh, next, we did the Buchanan Hamilton watercolors. Um, this is a collection of around 200 watercolor drawings of Indian and Nepalese plants and animals that Francis Buchanan Hamilton collected. Now, most of these um, drawings are oversized, and while the scanner is large enough to image these drawings, the limitations of the lighting um, became more apparent with these objects, and I think it's something that will be improved with the newest version of the scanner. Um, in 2014, we just finished the correspondence of James Edward Smith. And this um, consisted of over 3,500 letters and made almost 13,500 images. And this uh, collection is going to be discussed in detail by my colleague Tom shortly. Um, unlike the Linnaean correspondence, which was the collection that was digitized out of house, these letters were all digitized before being put into fascicules, which are specialized folders, and it resulted in much better images. Um, I didn't really show you when I showed the Linnaean correspondence, I zoomed in, but they digitized them so that there was the whole fascicule, so you can't actually get a very good zoom on it. So I would recommend, although they're all uniform size, um, you just don't get the nice results in the end. Uh, currently, this is the collection we're working on right now, the Linnaean manuscripts, and to date we've done 533 items and generated almost 23,000 images. Um, my colleague Isabel is going to discuss this uh, collection in further detail. I do have a confession that sometimes it's a little bit boring when you're digitizing every day in languages that you can't read. But once in a while, you come across a little gem like this. Um, this one was done by his, uh, Linnaeus's son, probably during one of his father's lectures, where he um, took the liberty of sketching his father as the devil. So. <laughs> um, and finally, this was a, a side project. We have, the library holds a collection of about 1,600 portraits um, of historical figures related both to natural history and or the Linnaean Society. And as a side project, I digitized um, the portrait collection in order to enhance the their already existing library records, um, the catalog records, sorry. These images are not hosted by ULCC, but now when users use the library catalog, they get a thumbnail of the portrait, which must be very helpful when they're researching. And I sped right through that, but I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope I've been able to give you a picture of what we've been doing here. And um, at the end of the session, do please feel free to ask me any questions. Thank you. <laughs>